What's going on, everyone? Hunter and Drew here, Philly Insider Post Game. Got our first week of games rounded up. I guess you could say technically on Friday that was the case, but having it being a Sunday, it feels like we've kind of got a full week under our belts now, Drew. And we finished our third series of the year. Yesterday, we clinched the series win. We are we were unable to finish it off with a sweep today, unfortunately. So thoughts on today's game, Drew? Any big takeaways before we get into the nitty-gritty here? Um, no, I think my biggest takeaway was just the fact that, you know, they battled even though their starting pitcher didn't have his best stuff. And, you know, the offense was pretty pretty abysmal at points. But, I mean, the game still still stayed close. And, I mean, the bullpen ultimately came in and did their job. So, I mean, more of that, and we'll probably win some games going like this. So, I think I feel all right. Sure. Yeah, and it was a low-scoring affair. And I, with that, I want to get into the pitching first because Christopher Sanchez definitely did not have his best stuff today. He was all over the place, did not hit the strike zone very much, walked a few guys. Then when he was in the strike zone, he was getting hit around. Uh, the la the Not the fifth inning when he was in. The fourth inning, he had a really quick inning. Seemed like he settled in a bit. Fifth inning was not great. He only got one out there. But that being said, on a day where he didn't have his best stuff, as you said, he did battle. And if that's going to be one of his worst starts of the year, you'll take that. I mean, he limited the damage even on a day where he wasn't really locked in. He was fine. And he kept us in that game. He was not the reason we lost this game. He gives up three runs. Yes. Um, he gave up two while he was in. And then the third guy scored when Marte came in, which we'll talk about Marte. I was, there was some encouraging stuff there for sure. Um, other stuff we'll talk about with him, but not really. I mean, another guy I'm not really going to get on for losing the game, but there were some positives, some negatives with him. But as far as Sanchez goes, yeah, he's going to be fine. I didn't think his changeup command specific, specifically was there because even if his other pitches, his sinker and slider, aren't working very well, I think if his changeup's there, he's going to be fine most of the time. And for a day when his changeup really wasn't there to his full effect, I still thought he was most mostly just fine again. I mean, that's really the word I would use for him today. Nothing more, nothing less. Yeah, you can't really expect him to go out there and be, you know, an ace every time he goes out on the mound or anything because that's just not who he's going to be. I mean, he's going to be a guy that gives up a couple runs pretty much every outing. But, I mean, he's going to have those outings like he did the last time out, and he looked really, really good. And I think he had eight Ks last time he pitched. So, I mean, just two totally different outings for him, unfortunately. But, you know, I mean, definitely don't don't concern yourself with Sanchez because I mean, ultimately he was fine today for what you expect out of him. Yeah, I'm not really going to be too concerned about him after this start, but I do want to talk about the guy who pitched after him before we get back to the offense. Uh, Marte went one and two-thirds today. He was a little bit shaky in the dirty inning he came into with a runner on. I believe it was first and third, actually. And he gets that first out, sack fly. It was hit pretty hard, though. Did hang the slider just a tad. Gets the out, though, unfortunately. Did have a guy score. Um, but ultimately, you know, you got the out. And then he did walk a couple guys. Um, he almost gives up a home run to Joey Menezes. It was hit very, very hard, and it was literally just foul. Like, I really thought it was going to be fair. I thought at first I was like, this is going to go foul. And then it was not really curving as much as I hoped it would. Thought it was going to be fair, and then it ended up foul. And then he threw a wild pitch, which then put runners in scoring position. That being said, you know, he did give up some hard contact in that inning. He got out of it. I was more impressed with him in the clean inning he had in the sixth. And I think – with him having that splitter this year, that is definitely going to help him against lefties. I think that's something he's going to be a little better at, and, and I think that's going to help him to stay in the big leagues for the entire year. I'm not ruling out him going to the minors at some point, but I do think that's a big help in the sense that he's he's going to at least have a weapon against lefties now, which I felt like he didn't have last year. His slider is definitely sharper, too. It's been a more competitive pitch this year. It's not completely out of the zone. Uh, you know, he does still miss in the zone more than you'd like with that pitch. That's just going to happen. Um, but more than a usual guy probably would. That being said, he's also putting it in the right spots when it's out of the zone for the most part. And I thought he was good today. Uh, you know, I don't think he was great. I don't think he was bad. But I thought for the most part he did his job. And I think he's been really solid to start the season. I mean, today probably was, you could argue, I don't want to say it was his worst outing of the year. But you could argue that, and it was still one and two thirds scoreless. So yeah, he did let the run come across, limited the damage though, and I like what we're seeing from Marte. You know, I don't think he's quite a high leverage guy. I think today you saw he's not quite ready for a dirty inning yet, but I do think a, a clean inning, you're down a couple guys due to availability, 
especially early in the season, he is really good depth to have. I mean, not a lot of teams have that guy as their seventh, eighth guy in the bullpen. <laughs> so I really like what he's done so far in that role. Yeah, he's been uh, he's been really good. And uh, it's definitely encouraging to see him around the strike zone pretty much the entire time because last year that was literally his kryptonite. Like, like he came in sometimes and he just had no feel for any of his pitches and he would walk guys and then somebody would get a hit and that would just – it would snowball on him and – Ultimately, he wouldn't finish a lot of innings last year because of it. And I think uh, I think today kind of showed you where Rob feels, what Rob feels about him right now. I think he feels good about him and enough to put him in a situation like that. And I think that probably put some confidence in him a little bit. And ultimately, I mean, he did he did his job today. I mean, like you said, an inning and two thirds scoreless is nothing to like you know lift your nose at. But uh, I mean, the rest of the bullpen today was obviously really good. Matt Strom, another great outing. That's mm-hmm. absolutely massive because. He started the season very slow, and uh, Sir Anthony, he I think he gave up one hit, right? Yeah, yeah, they both yep. did. Yeah, Scoreless. but uh, yeah, I mean, it's good to see though. I mean, Sir Anthony's one of the biggest pieces in the bullpen as far as vers- or volatility goes, so it's good to see him getting off to a hot start here, and uh, you know, keeping keeping making progress from what he was last year because last year he was not what not the Sir Anthony we know from the past, and it's definitely nice to see him getting back to that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I thought they were both solid today. I don't have huge takeaways on them. They did their jobs, give up some hard contact here and there, but you know, I'm not really super concerned or super encouraged necessarily by what they did today. It was just um, one of those games where they just kind of came in and did their jobs in a game where we were down a run. So, uh, you know, props to them. Like Scott said, you got to take your caps to both bullpens. They both did very well. And yeah, for a team in the nationals who obviously have a lot of players who probably aren't long-term big leaguers, uh, they do have relief relief pitchers. I mean, that has been the case for a couple of years now. They've had bullpen pieces. I think the three guys they had today on the mound, Weems, Harvey, and Finnegan, I mean, I think the last two have been pretty solid at certain points in their their careers. Um, you know, those are names we've heard for a few years now. I mean, Harvey, I think he's got a sub three ERA in his major league career. Finnegan's obviously been a pretty solid piece for them in the past. He's like a three, five ERA guy in his career. So I feel pretty good about, uh, or not, I feel pretty good about. If I was a Nationals fan, I would feel pretty good about those guys, even though we're, you know, they're not competing. I thought they were solid today. So credit to them. After they got Gore out of the game, they got some of their best bullpen pieces in there and they did their job. That being said, I mean, Trey Turner, I mean, just inches away from a big hit there to start the ninth inning. Um, laces that ball on a day where he was not having his best day at the plate, had three Ks, and then that's baseball, man. I mean, you just catch a tough break sometimes when it's not going well for you. Stuff like that happens. You can get robbed of a hit. And I think it was Winker. Yeah, it was Winker out there who made the catch. Props to him. I mean, that was an incredible catch. I'd imagine the catch probability was pretty low on that one. And he made he made an incredible play. You just got to tip your – speaking of tipping your cap, you got to tip your cap on that one. And, um, yeah, I mean, Bryce also hit that baseball hard too. It was just right to center field. And then JT almost gets screwed out of a walk. Thankfully, does get walked. And Bohm looks at a very hittable second strike and then looks at a third strike and does not expand the zone and goes down looking. Can't happen. Uh, Bohm, you need to expand the zone there. I know he's got a a pretty decent feel for the strike zone. Um, Yeah, he does go chasing for contact some of the time. But when he watches, I would say usually he is right. But with it being the ninth inning and you have two strikes on you, and the way the umpire has called that whole game and he has expanded the strike zone, you have to do the same. Now, that is not the reason we lost. It shouldn't have come down to that point. But I was pretty frustrated by that bone at bat because we have seen that before from him. Oh, you're muted, Drew. It's tough because he has uh, he has good numbers off Finnegan. And uh, it's kind of uh, disappointing to see him go up there and pretty much have a non-competitive at bat. And... I mean, like you said, it's the ninth inning. You gotta kind of bear down and protect the zone a little bit, especially like like you said, because the umpire's expanding all day. I mean, that's just you gotta be better than that in that situation, unfortunately. And he wasn't today. I mean, Bohm is usually the guy to go to whenever it's a big spot, but unfortunately you can't come through every single time. And you know, today just didn't seem to be the Phil's day. It's just just the way it goes sometimes. No, the offense was pretty putrid today. I mean, there's really not much to speak of there except Sosa had a great day. It's funny. The two guys people complain about being in the lineup, or two of the guys uh, in Witt and Sosa were the only two sources of offense in the whole lineup today. I thought Witt did a really good job in that. I forget what inning it was, but 
really good sequence there. He got jammed two pitches inside. He takes the second one, loops it out to right field, steal second base. He got an incredible jump too. I mean, he was, yeah. I think even if they had tried to pick him off, he would have been at second base with the jump he got. Um, gets the second base and then Sosa drives him in. You generate a run from small ball there. And then Sosa goes yard. Uh, both the pitches Sosa hit today were, I believe they were both sliders. Regardless, they were both low breaking balls. Second one was low and in. And he just went yeah. down and got both of them. And he takes that one out to left center field for a home run. And, I mean, that's what you're going to get when you have a lefty on the mound and you have the breaking ball coming into you. That is textbook hitting. I mean, he did his job there. So, so really good job by him today. Good to see him get off to uh, a good start for the season. Obviously, he didn't really do much in the last game we played. I believe he had a bloop single, but it was good to see him be productive today. And unfortunately, he was the only guy who really did anything of note. Um, and those were the only two runs we scored were from those two guys. So, you know, I, I don't think Witt's been great to start the season. He was fine today. Uh, the strikeout was a little bit annoying. But regardless, he's making contact a good bit of the time. And, yeah, again, people are going to complain about the lineup. But in April, you can't play these guys every single day. And I have been someone who I've complained about Marsh's playing time and that he should hit against lefties. He did more this week. It's not like he didn't play lefties at all this week. They gave him some opportunities. So on a Sunday day game where we're not getting an off day until the 18th, yes, I am okay with Marsh not playing that game. As someone who has campaigned for him to get more playing time, it's April. Let's cool off a little bit on the lineups. These guys are going to play. The bench guys also need to play to stay fresh and to get reps and to be ready for when their number gets called too in a big spot, especially if Rojas is going to stay up here. You need guys who are going to pinch it for those guys at some point, too. So I'm okay with the way the lineup was set today. I'm really not going to make a big deal about it, especially when even with those guys getting an off day, you know they're going to end up playing because they're all going to pinch hit for those guys. Once a righty's in the game, they don't let Pache hit. They don't let Sosa hit the whole game. So you knew Stott and Marsh were going to eventually get in. Um, so I think that was – people were making a little bit too big of a deal out of that today. I think there are times to – question Rob's decision-making. I didn't really get it today when you had won the series already. I'm not saying you just let up, but I think today was perfectly fine from a fan perspective for this lineup. Yeah, I totally agree with you because, I mean, like you said, you can't you can't ride these guys for 20 games straight in the beginning of the season. And especially Mackenzie Gore's got nasty stuff. I mean, Yeah, he's good, man. I mean, he's yeah, better he, than New York. Like, the, like last year, we obviously got the best of him. Sorry to interrupt you, but – No, you're um, good. Last year, we obviously got the best of him, but he had his ups and downs last year, and his ups were very nice. So I just want to yeah. put that out there. Yeah, I mean, not many left-handed young starting pitchers out there like him that are throwing 100 mile an hour. And they, he has a pretty good breaking ball, too. That slider is pretty good. His changeup, it seems like it has some potential. He didn't really locate it today. But, I mean, that, I, I don't really have any confidence that Marsh would have done anything against him today. I mean, he was pretty good today against us, and that's just unfortunate. But, you know, it's – Comes and goes, you know. He had a bad outing last time he pitched, I believe, and he kind of bounced back this time, and that's just the way it's going to happen, and it's just baseball, you know. And, um, I mean, as far as our, our lineup goes, like you said, I'm not really worried about getting people days off, and, like, especially Marsh and Stott. Those are two young guys. You don't want to wear them out, and they they only have a few seasons under their belt, so it's only going to be up from here for them. I think they're going to get a lot of playing time against lefties anyways, so I don't really look too much into it. Right. And the only other thing I'll say on the offense is, granted, it was a lefty. So Castellanos did have a little bit of an easier time, I guess, making contact. But I thought the one fly ball he hit the right field, obviously, yeah. I mean, there's not really much to take away there. I thought he was close. You know, I think there's been a couple of those at bats where he has looked a little bit closer. And the reality is they're just going to need Castellanos. Like we can talk about the fact that he probably shouldn't be in this lineup and that he is not a good baseball player. And I'm on board with that. Like, I I think he does have that good baseball player still inside there somewhere. Um, I don't think the Reds version of him just disappeared. I think he can adjust and adapt to the tendencies that have been built the past couple of years and be better. But ultimately, we're just gonna we're just gonna need that to happen because we're paying him a lot of money. Even if he's not if he's playing at a, a point where he should get DFA'd, it's just not gonna happen because he's get he's owed so much over the next three seasons. So. You just need him to – you need to ride it out with him, uh, whether we like it or not. That's what's going to happen, whether we like it or not. So any positive signs we can get from him, I'll take. I'm not saying it's going to turn into anything, but they need him. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't. I can't, I can't emphasize that enough. It's just he's not going anywhere. Um, so 
they're going to need him to at least do something. I don't care how little of a production it is. They're going to, they're going to rely on him at certain points this season to, to help carry the offensive load. So hopefully he gets closer. Yeah. I mean, like you said, they're going to need him. I mean, he's, if he's not hitting in the middle of that lineup, he's going to cost them a lot of runs and a lot of games. And if he is hitting, he's going to win them a lot of games because I mean, he's going to come up there with a ton of RBI opportunities throughout the season. And I mean, yeah, it's, he has to be better. He has to be, I mean, he has three years left on this contract. And like you said, they're not going to just dump him. I mean, he's, you're not going to replace his production, even though how, even how bad he's been, he's still mostly a productive player. I mean, he's had a bad start, but last year, I mean, and last year and the year before, he still had a ton of RBIs. You know, you're, you're not going to just replace somebody like that because at the end of the day, he's better than anybody that's out there on the free agent market right now. I mean, Tommy Pham, I mean, yeah, yeah Tommy Pham, <laughs> Tommy Pham's like, he's not he's not going to hit a ton of home runs like Castellanos is going to, but, you know, maybe he would. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't I'm know. I'm not familiar with his game like that. Yeah. But. I feel like he, I feel like he's probably better than Cassianos, but you're not signing him to replace Cassianos. Right. You're not, yeah, you're not going to DFA mm-hmm. Cassianos to, he would be back. for Rojas and move right. to center. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, you can't expect them to just get rid of Cassianos, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it, they're going to play him and he's going to be in the lineup every day. So you got to kind of yep. deal with it, like you said. So, yeah. Got to take the highs with the lows. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, another day of asking the Phillies to sign Tommy Pham, but I know they're not. <laughs> I, I haven't seen. I haven't seen anything on them being in on him at all. Um, but they absolutely like. I just. I think they should be. I saw some. There was some discourse today on Twitter about th- them riding Rojas out for like possibly another month or so. I don't know if I would go that far. Um, now, granted, he didn't play today, so I don't want to talk about him too much. But I don't know. I, I, I've. I don't think they're that committed to him to where they would give it until like the end of May. If there are positive signs, yes, absolutely they will because then there's reason to. But if it's the same thing we've seen for another two, three weeks, I don't think they would let it go to the end of May. But I just wanted to say that real quick while we're on that topic. Um, by the point we the point we demote Rojas, if that is to happen, and again, I will keep saying I, I do think that will happen. I don't think Tommy Fan will be available. But if he is, I mean, you got to go out and get him, in my opinion. Um, but regardless, I, I just, I, again, I don't think that's going to happen. But anything else you want to touch on on the offense today? The only other thing I would say was Schwarber was, you know, he had a nice bounce back game. You know, obviously yesterday went over five and three Ks. Today he looked more like the 2024 Schwarber we saw in the first eight games, which were or, uh, seven games, which was one for three, single, uh, based on balls, good eye at the plate, did his job today uh, as a leadoff guy. He gets on twice. That being said, he gets thrown out well, at the pickoff, and he gets thrown out coming back to first base. And that probably – we probably could have gotten a run in at least one of those situations. So that cannot happen. Uh, so as far as Schwarber having a bounce back plate offensively with his approach at the plate, he negated it with his, ba- his base running today. So that is really disappointing because we could be watching extra innings right now if not for that. Granted, I'm glad the guys get to rest a little bit and that, you know, we don't have to use our whole bullpen to try to win an extra inning game, but that's disappointing. Um, the base running issues continue. I think someone commented about it earlier. Uh, yeah, Ryan, great question, uh, Ryan. He says, real, the real question, did the Phillies make a base running mistake today? They did. Uh, they made multiple. So here we are, the, the, another day, another uh, did the Phillies make a base running mistake today tweet. Unfortunate, Drew. Yeah, it's... It's like I said yesterday, it's unexcusable. I mean, you're a major league baseball player. We got to get it together at this point. I mean, it's, it's every day at this point. I, I don't, I don't know what we're doing, but I mean, yeah. Other than that, I mean, touching on the offense a little bit. I, I don't, I mean, I feel good about where Trey and Bryce are. I think they're both getting, yeah. getting to the point where they're, they're locking in a little bit. I mean, even though they both didn't do much today, I think, uh, I think they're both getting there. And I think Trey is right there. I mean, you saw it in the ninth inning. He smoked that ball, and Kyle Finnegan's a good reliever, so definitely something you like to see. And uh, same with Bryce; he's smoked the ball off Finnegan. Yeah, but, I think. Yeah, Trey I'm right. not concerned with either of those guys. Basically, is all right. I'm saying. I, I think Trey is right there. Um, the results are not quite there yet, but I think he's hitting the baseball well when he's hitting it, um, and I think he's he's just missing when he's when he's missing it. I think there's a lot of pitches in the zone he could probably do some damage with that he's not doing damage with right now. That is getting a little frustrating. But I also think you have seen Trey lay off some pitches here and there that have 
I mean, their pitches he swung at last year, early in the year. So I think the discipline has undoubtedly been better this year so far. Um, and on that note with Castellanos, I did see him today. He almost check swung at a slider low and away. I think it was a slider low and away, and he didn't. And that tells me not only is he like that, usually when I see him not swing at a low and away slider, I'm thinking he probably just decided before the pitch was even thrown he's not swinging. But on that one, I'm thinking, oh, well, he was thinking about swinging at it. He laid off. It was close. Again, I'm going to take whatever positives I can out of his <laughs> offensive approach at this point. So that was also encouraging to see. Going back uh, to Cassiano for a second there. But um, yeah. I don't really have anything else. Bowman JD didn't do much, but they've both been fine to start this year, honestly. Um, Bone was a little disappointing today, but JT has been awesome to start this year. So I'm really not concerned about JT at all. It's just going to happen. I mean, there's days where your offense just goes quiet and it's unfortunate, but, uh, yeah, I don't really have anything else on this game. If you want to get to some of the comments, but if you got anything else, go for it. Nope. I think I'm, I think I covered everything I wanted to cover. Cool. Well, we got a lot of comments, but I do want to get to this one from solely about the pitch clock. Cause I think we're probably going to have the same opinion on this. There's been a lot of this going around. Not sure if y'all touched on this lightly, so he says, or not, but are y'all on board with getting rid of the pitch clock, and do y'all think the injuries are a result of it? Drew, I think, we're, like I said, I think we're on the same page here. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, um, I definitely don't think we should get rid of it because it's made the game 10 times more watchable. I mean, I would have watched anyways, but I know it's brought a lot of fans in that weren't watching before because they were like, oh, you know, I don't want to sit down for three hours and watch this one pitcher take 25 seconds to throw the ball every time yeah and i mean a double herrera taking 37 seconds in the box every time (laughs) yeah yeah or i mean bryce was a bad one for it too actually he was he was one of the guys that took a long time to get ready between pitches but um anyway i don't think it's causing injuries i definitely don't think that's true and i saw a video last night i think i sent it in our group chat uh glasnow he was talking about yeah he was talking about right he was talking about his injury, and I think he's kind of a, like contributing it or attributing it to uh, not using not sticky stuff, like not spider tack, but like he said he was using like rosin and uh, sunscreen, and that was helping him a lot because he didn't have to uh, like whenever he grabs the ball, like he don't have to. He said he had to put the ball like back further in his hand whenever he wasn't using it, and like it made him have to squeeze harder, and that puts more pressure on your uh, on your UCL and your forearm and stuff, and that's where a lot of his injuries are coming from. I think that's what he was saying. So, I mean, that makes sense to me, and that would be what I would say. So, I mean, I don't want them to use sticky stuff, but, I mean, if they need to use, like, rosin and sunscreen to get a grip on the ball and a little better, yeah. yeah. And if that's going to prevent a lot of injuries, which it kind of seems right because the last couple years have been worse, and the last couple years is when they've been cracking down on sticky stuff. So kind of makes sense. Yeah, and guys just throw harder than they used to as well. I mean, it's just – that's just the game of baseball right now. I will say, as someone who liked kind of the art of having pitchers go at their own pace, I missed that sense of the game. But I do think it's – there's no doubt it's made it more watchable for a broader audience. And I think it has attracted more of an audience, into, especially for the playoffs. I think it's helped too. Um, granted, I think playoff baseball was watchable regardless, but that's as someone who loves baseball. But I think it was – I think it's helped with playoff baseball get more people – into it as well um, because you're not committing, like you said, four to five hours to watch, uh, sit down and watch the game. It's probably three at most um, depending, yeah. you know, obviously it depends. And I do miss the tension of like building during those, those big pauses and big moments in playoff baseball. But as far as the injuries go, I really don't think it's the pitch clock. You know, I'm sure there are, there might be a few cases here and there. I'm not saying there's zero cases that are related to the pitch clock. That could be part of it. Um, Maybe for some of the pitchers who took more time. I don't know. I haven't done research on that, but I think it's like Drew said, there's some something to be said about legal substances, not being able to even use those anymore. And there's also something to be said about not being, um, what was I saying just before that? Um, Oh yeah. Throwing harder. I, I I wouldn't attribute the the injuries to the pitch clock. I I think that's a little bit um, much. So yeah, I mean, I, I am, that's kind of my opinion as someone who's not in the medical field and also not throwing a baseball a hundred miles an hour every year. So, but you know, Glasnow gave his opinion on it. It was interesting. So let's get to a few more of these comments here too. We got, we got a number of them. Uh, David was in here earlier. David, thanks for the comment. Says seriously, we can't win every single game. And Chris Sanchez is a number four or five starter for a reason. Yeah. I mean, again, we, we kind of talked about Sanchez. I don't think he was the reason they lost today. He gave up three runs and even on a day where he didn't have his best stuff, he limited the damage. 
he is a number four starter, and he's a very good number four. I think we might have lost Hunter there for a second. Four starter. Um, they're just going to have to find ways to. I think. I think I'm. I think I, my internet lagged out. Yeah, I think you're good. Now. That'll be lost, Drew. I think I'm back now. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, like you said, David, they can't win every game. But um, yeah, I wouldn't put it on Chris Sanchez. So that's kind of where I'm at. And and Turnbull's a good number five right now slash long man. You know, I wouldn't go as far after one start to just say he's number four just yet. Um, but thanks for tuning in, Star Wars. Appreciate you. Um, and Scott says with the rotation set for the cards, let's take two from them. Yeah, those were what we were talking about before the stream, Drew. Got to take at least two in this upcoming series. It'd be great to sweep them, but I think the sweep was more likely today than it is in the Cardinals series. The Cardinals are bad, but they are still going to be competitive from time to time. I mean, right. it's baseball. They could they, they could take two or three from us. So, but you got to take two, in my opinion, and just take care of business in that series because they're not playing good baseball right now. The Cardinals, yeah, is. yeah, the Cardinals are a bad, bad team, and I mean, like you said, they have at least a couple formidable hitters. I mean, the Nationals do as well, but the Nationals doesn't doesn't feel like they have the pitching. And, I mean, the Cardinals obviously don't anymore, but they did at one point. And I think uh, they still have Helsley in the back of the bullpen. So, I mean, if it's close in the ninth inning and you're behind, there's not a good chance you're going to be coming back. So, yeah. I mean, as long as you can get out got it, get out ahead of them early, I think you can feel okay about maybe sweeping that series. But, I mean, the offense hasn't really shown us that that they've been capable of doing that yet. So, I think I think two out of three is pretty pretty re- reasonable for expectations. Yeah, future Philly Ryan Helsley it is, by the way. Um, but – I don't think you're going to get a fluke finger injury in the ninth inning this time around if Ryan Helsley's coming in. So don't put yourself in that spot for more than one of those games. If it happens one game and you lose it, whatever, but you can't lose more than one in this upcoming series. Um, and I believe the pitching match matchups are, I believe it's Michaelis tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, versus Turnbull. So Michaelis has not been the same pitcher he was a couple years ago when he, he first got, or whenever he first got back into the league. He had a couple of really good years there. Am I correct in saying that he hasn't quite been the same guy the last year or so? Who was that? Michaelis. I mean, he hasn't. Oh, been yeah, yeah, he hasn't. Once. Yeah, he definitely hasn't been what he once was there yeah. for a couple of years. I know. I think it was two years ago he had a pretty good year for them, but yeah, I mean, last last year he was bad, and this year I don't I don't really know what his first couple starts have been like, but yeah, yeah, I don't I don't think he's a guy that scares you by any means. No, and then you got Thompson. Uh, pitching on uh, Tuesday versus Wheeler. So you got that there going for them. Uh, I would really hope we win that game, but I imagine that'll be the one we lose because that's how the Phillies roll. And then they have Lynn on the mound in on uh, Wednesday for the day game. Please just crush Lance Lynn. I mean, that guy, is, he's past his prime. I mean, he was, credit to Lance Lynn, he had a number of years where he was just consistently good. Um, nothing amazing, but very, very solid, a very, very good middle of the rotation guy for a long time. But he's not that anymore. I mean, he can't pitch the lefties at all. So the lefties need to do their job that day. And I I would guess, I mean, who's going to pitch for that us in that game? I mean, who just who did uh um, I'm trying to look real quick. Would it be would it be well Knowles just pitched on Friday. It'll be yeah, it'll be for the Cardinal series, it'll be Wednesday. Turnbull, Wheeler, Wheeler. Nola. Okay. Because Nola just pitched Friday, so Knowles. Because Knowles just went. That's correct, right? He went Friday. Yeah, yeah, he did. So that wouldn't be a full five days rest. So one, two, three, All four. Right. Five. Oh wait, no, it would. Never mind. I, I'm. I just miscounted the day. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So Knowles will go that day. Um, they'd have it as yeah. TBD right now. I imagine yeah. they'll just put Nola there, but we'll find out. Um, but regardless, you know, there's no reason. I mean. They're really looking at the pitching matchups. Just I know that's not everything, but there really is no reason you shouldn't win two of those. And on paper, they should sweep them. But I, I you know, I don't think they're going to sweep them. To be quite honest, it's just how baseball works. Um, right. Sean says too many hitters in this lineup are automatic outs right now. I mean, I think it's mostly just Rojas and Castellanos that are the automatic outs. I think the yeah. rest of the lineup, you've gotten some contributions from them here and there. Today was not great. But I think there's enough good signs from the other guys to where those guys are really the automatic outs. And yeah, I, I also saw I, Sean. I also thought it was going too. I really thought Trey Turner got all of that. As soon as he hit it, I was like, "Oh, that's probably out of there." But you know, that's one of those things. Like you said, it's momentum thing. Once he hit that, it was just like it kind of took the air out of the ballpark uh, for the Phillies at least. And you knew they were probably weren't going to win that game. But then Harper comes up and I mean, he smokes the ball. It's just right to the center fielder. So um, and JT got on too. Like it wasn't like it was completely over, but. 
you know, again, bone with the last at bat, just did not like the way he approached the last two strikes that at bat, but it is what it is. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I no, I mean, yeah, like you said, it's just Turner and Harper, they, they lace those balls and it's just, I mean, like you said, it kind of sucked it out, sucked it out of him a little bit. And I mean, JT, he almost got screwed on that, that ball that uh, did not get called and he almost got struck out because of it, but you know, he kind of bounced back. That was good to see as well. Actually don't think we really talked about that, but I mean, I think, I think we pretty much covered everything we wanted to cover for the game today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And like Scott says here too, I mean, Boom's great at hitting opposite field. I, that's why I was also disappointed, Scott, because that he had a perfect pitch on the second strike to just take to, down the right field line. And you might be able to score JT with his speed. That's a possibility yeah. that you tie the game there if he puts that in play. And then takes one that it, it wasn't, I mean, yeah, it, it hit like it was on the border. Like it was a strike and um, it was there, but like it wasn't like it was so far out of the zone that Bohm couldn't have done anything with that. Even the third strike, he could have done something with that too. So, uh, but like Sully said, it's kind of a rest day with some of the guys that were playing in a lefty lineup too, um, or yeah. versus left handed pitching lineup and you'll take the series win. So now yep. let's take the next series win as well. And yeah, the umpiring the last couple games has been atrocious, like Sean said. It's been <laughs> absolutely laughable. Um, but I, they're not going to do the robo-umps. It's just probably not going to happen anytime soon because they need it. I mean, I think the, the umpires would be very upset with that, and you're getting a lot of people – you're kicking a lot of people out of jobs. But they could certainly implement the challenge system. That needs to be here ASAP. It's worked in the minor leagues. I don't see any reason why that shouldn't be here right now. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a great system. I mean, it takes like, I mean, five seconds max, and the, all the hitter does is just tap the top of their helmet, and the umpire turns around and, like, they get the review call, and he gets it, and is it I think it's an earpiece or something like that. But, mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's so simple and easy, and it, I don't I don't understand why the minor leagues have it, but the major leagues don't. It just doesn't yeah. really make any sense. Yeah, it is what it is. Um uh, did the Phillies really try to pursue Shota Imanaga? Nerea, welcome from Italy. We appreciate you. I'm sure they were in on those sweepstakes, but I'd imagine they weren't super competitive. I don't think they wanted to pay him a ton, considering they didn't really, they weren't really in the market for a fifth guy. People wanted them to be, but they would have had to move Taiwan, and I don't think that was a real possibility this offseason. So I'm sure they explored it. I'm sure there were conversations, but I wouldn't have, and I'm not reporting anything like like we always say, but. Just want to clarify that. This is just my estimated guess. But that's kind of where I stand on it. I don't think it was anything more than just, you know, taking a chance on a lower price and seeing if he would take what they offered him. Yeah. I mean, I think they were more focused on uh, Yamamoto than they were anything because I mean, they offered that guy a ton of money. And, I mean, I think, like you said, they weren't looking for, like, a back-end guy. They were looking for more like a front, front of the rotation type of pitcher if they were going to go out there and spend a ton of money. And that was exactly what Yamamoto was going to be. But. I mean, yeah, ultimately, I don't think they were really in on Imanaga, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and also, he's a fly ball pitcher, too, which that'll work at Wrigley when the wind it helps you a lot. And it's a little bit colder there, especially at the start of the season. And when it matters most, that is going to help him, too. I'm not saying every baseball is getting hit to the deepest part of the ballpark, but being more of a fly ball pitcher, that is a really good landing spot for him. Citizens Bank Park, yeah, it gets colder at certain times of the year, but – in the summer, that could be a nightmare. I mean, it's definitely – I think Wrigley's dimensions are a little deeper, if I'm not mistaken. But just knowing CBP is not like it, – it's a more hitter-friendly ballpark. It's not the most hitter-friendly, but it is more hitter-friendly, I would say. So, yeah. um, Sully says, not sure if y'all touched – oh, we already got to that one. Um, and he said, as a physical therapist, I agree. I think the substances add a bit of unneeded stress, but that's not the case for the majority. I think what well, you were kind of saying that, like Glasnow said, uh, it, it helped him a lot. Um, yeah. with having the having the sunscreen and the rosin, which were completely legal before the substance crackdown, I believe um, that helped him a lot. And like you said, he said he has to get the ball deeper into his palm now to try to get a better grip. And this was a couple years ago. And I think that I'm sure it still rings true. Yeah, right. So, yeah, just to clarify that. But yeah, um, yeah. Scott says, let's face it, we need to we need Nick and Trey to hit period. Again, we kind of talked about Trey. Not super concerned about him just yet. I think there are good signs at the plate for him right now. As far as Nick goes, yeah. I mean, it was it's been a little bit better as of late. I, I think the last two days have had some encouraging signs, but not enough for me to be like he's gonna break out. It's just little signs of life, if anything, just to clarify there. But 
Uh, Robert says, didn't see the game today, but early in the season, there are inconsistencies in the offense. Base running blunders are unacceptable. Yeah, I mean, flat out, they're unacceptable. You're a major league player, like I said earlier, and it's there's no reason for it. I mean, you you get paid to do this. You need, need to take it seriously and go out there and practice because it doesn't look like our guys are, quite frankly. And I, I said this on Twitter. I mean, these are mistakes that middle school kids are getting to run laps or making they're making them run laps for. And they're yeah. learning at a young age. You know, you don't you don't have mental lapses like that on the base paths. Now, if you're new to baseball and you don't understand it, that's one thing as uh, a middle schooler. You know, there's all different levels there. But for little league kids, sometimes they are made to run laps when they have issues on the base paths too. So for major league players to be doing this as consistently as they are, I mean, let's <laughs> let's be real. The Phillies have been doing this for a year, and the start like they did it all last year, and now they're doing it to start this year too. There's, there really is no excuse. It is little league. It is little league. I mean, this is day one, drill it into your head, learn the fundamentals of the game. I don't care that Schwarber got a bad read on the ball to center field. You just can't be, especially being Schwarber. I know he's running better this year. You cannot be that aggressive on a baseball like that, especially when it's hit more towards right center field. So if he does catch it, his momentum is going to be going towards first base and he's going to be closer to the bag just as a result. Cannot happen. Um, and yep. I mean, Schwarber and Castellanos getting picked off. Come on. I mean, those are two guys that should never be happening. Where are you going? Like that reminds me of Cliff Lee getting picked off. That's a guy who should have been running back in 2013. You can't do that. So I don't know what's going through their heads there. Bryson Stott, I'm okay with it because he gets picked off in the Reds game. He fully commits to going to second base. There's a chance he's going to get there. We've seen him swipe bags before. If it's Trey Turner, I'm also okay with it because I like the aggressiveness there. Trey is so smart on the base paths. It usually doesn't happen. But point being, I want those types of guys, if they're going to get picked off, I want it to at least be guys who I know are being aggressive for a good reason. I don't want it to be two guys who shouldn't be running, period, unless there's something with the pitchers wind up where they can get a good jump on it. So, again, just to continue to rant on the base running there, really frustrating. Um, yeah. And Sean gives us two cents on the uh, the injuries lately. T too much emphasis on guys throwing 100 miles an hour. Guys like Halliday and Maddox had the right approach. Throw strikes and get quick outs, go deeper into games. And, yeah, I, I think there is there is something to be said about throwing at higher velocity. I do think it is, it's much needed in today's game because all these guys can catch up to 92. If it's 92 in the zone, you're going to get pummeled, right? I mean, we've seen when Nola has a bad game, he has a bad game. And part of that is, you know, if his stuff isn't playing very well, 92 middle in is going to get crushed. Um, but, you know, there are guys, there is something to be said about you don't need to throw 101, right? <laughs> like without control. You can throw 95, 90, look at Matt Strom. He's a great example. He hasn't been throwing 94, 95 yet this year. He's still at 93, which is, it's just, uh, it's just a little bit of a pet peeve of mine seeing him at 94, 95 last year. And he's still at 93 right now. But point being, you know, he, he, he gets some giddy up on his fastball late in uh, when it's traveling late into the strike zone, right? Even at 94, 95. Um, and there are plenty of better examples around the league who throw around that that can locate too and get quick outs, like Sean said. So, yeah, there's also that part of that discussion. Yeah, I mean, like you said, you don't need to throw 100, but you don't, you don't want to be pitching 92 right down the middle of the zone. I mean, yeah, Nola. I mean, he's a good example of it. Like, if he's if he's leaving balls over the middle of the plate, he's getting shelled most of the time. And I mean, you can have tons of success only throwing 93, 94 if you're painting around the outside, like Nola typically does. And I mean, if you have like, if you're only throwing 92, 93, you need to have like two or three good breaking balls. And I think Nola has that now. But I, I think before he was throwing that cutter, and he's throwing the cutter a lot more now, actually, which is kind of cool. I think he's, uh, I think he's locating it a lot better now than he was last year when he first, uh, what's the word, integrated it into his uh, arsenal. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, like you said, I think it's, we have a couple, we have a good mix of it. Like we have a good couple guys that throw for contact, and we have a couple guys that go for strikeouts. Nolan Wheeler, big strikeout guys. Sanchez and Ranger, big ground ball guys. So I think we have a good combo in the rotation. Definitely, yeah. Uh, Sully says, this Cardinals series is going to be crucial for us to prepare us for the Pirates. They're playing pretty good. Good time to get hot for St. Louis. And, yeah, the Pirates started off hot last year, too. Um, we'll see if they sustain it this year. But regardless, the Pirates have played well early in the season the past two years now. I mean, if you include this year so far, they've been playing good baseball. So they're not going to be an easy – like that's that's not one I go into saying we should definitely take. I mean, I would like us to take two out of three, but it's not what I'm saying. It's just we there's no reason we shouldn't take two out of three because I could see the Pirates coming in there and playing good baseball and just beating us. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you like Sully said, you need to use that Cardinal series 
play better baseball, play more fundamental in that series, and then go into that Pittsburgh series ready to go, ready for a better series. And a little probably, I mean, that might be your most outside of the Braves, which the Braves was March technically. The Pirates might be your most competitive series of the month. I mean, we'll see how the Reds pan out this year too. But those those two teams are the most competitive teams I think we played the entire month, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you play the Rockies, you play the Cardinals, like we said, you play the Reds again. You might be able to lump the Padres kind of in that same boat with the uh, the Reds and the Pirates. I mean, they're they're kind of in that not bad team, but also not necessarily considered a, con- a contender boat right now. So I guess we'll see what happens there. But then you finish off the month with the Angels too. So the Pirates is, I mean, that's going to be one of the better series of the season. I'm definitely curious to see what they look like against uh, against that squad. And I don't really, we don't know who's pitching yet, but we'll see. That Those will be interesting to see who lines up against uh, Mitch Keller and how that pans out. Yeah, I mean, the Pirates, like you said, they're, they're getting better every year, it seems like, honestly. I mean, they're definitely. not spending money, and it's kind of criminal that they're not spending money because they could be a really good team. I mean, they have a couple really good young guys, and they have some – Good pitching coming through the system now. Paul Skeens, I mean, that guy's going to be nasty. So <laughs> yeah, he's going to be. I mean, he's going to be up in the bigs this year for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just criminal that these low lower payroll teams don't spend money whenever they have good players like that. Because the Pirates, I mean, like you said, they're pretty competitive right now, and especially in the beginning of the season last year and this year, it's it's kind of a shame, really. But I mean, I, like you said, I'm I'm excited for that series for sure. Mm-hmm. It's tough because that you know they end up trading away. They had that core of McCutcheon, Marte. Uh, Polanco, you know, Polanco, I'm not saying was like a core guy, but just that team they had. Harrison was on that team too. They Josh some, Bell. Yeah. Garrett Cole and Jamison Tyone were both really good at one point. Yeah. Josh Bell was really good too. Um, they had a little window there, but they never really made it. I think the best they did was the wild card game, if I'm not mistaken. I think they won that against the Reds the one year against Cueto. Um, and then, you know, they one by one, they start trading those guys away down the road and, you know, they can't keep them in the building, unfortunately. Um, it sucks. You know, they're, they're, they're definitely a team that has had some young talent at points and they'll be interesting to see like how they kind of approach this new core coming up too. Cause they've also got a uh, Salamito, I think is how you say it. We had him on the podcast a couple years ago. They got him in the second round, not this past year, the year before, I think it was the year before it was a year. It was, I think it was two, three years ago, but point being, they got a guy like that in the second round. He was supposed to go in the first round and they get him on the first day of round two or the, or the sorry, the, the second day of the draft in round two. And that's another guy who's kind of coming up the system and could be up there at some point soon. So they've got some, I mean, they've definitely developed some guys, especially on the pitching end. Like if you have a lefty like him at the back of the rotation to balance out guys like Keller and Skeens at the front, uh, that's going to be exciting. And with good pitching, if they get in the wild card one year, we've seen what happens. You just need a couple top end pitchers and then good enough pitching after that. And you can make a run. It doesn't matter how your offense is. You just got to scrape across runs in the playoffs. It doesn't matter how you win. You just got to find ways to win games. So if they win a wild card series at some point, that's a team that could go far. But that, and that's just my two cents on the Pirates. I, I'm definitely watching them and how they come up. And actually, it's a four-game series. So a split would be perfect. If you get any more than that, great. Uh, but that's going to be an interesting series. Definitely be cool to see some of those guys and see who's kind of panning out for them and who's not. Because Brian Reynolds locked himself in there, so he better hope they figure it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. O'Neal Cruz is definitely an exciting young player as well. Yeah. And uh, speaking of uh, young pitching prospects, uh, George Klassen for the Phillies last night, man. That was good yeah, that stuff. Was cool. that was yeah, cool. that was that was really nice. I mean, he, I think he had like four perfect innings and he had not, like nine strikeouts or something like that, which is crazy. And I think he had like 11 whiffs or something like that as well. So that was cool. Yeah. Yeah, anytime you see any of our prospects touching 100, I mean, you're going to take note. So that's someone to watch. Where's he? Is he in high A right now? Is that no, correct? Low, a, low A. He's a, he's a thresher. Yep. Got it. But uh, okay. Mitch, Rupert, Mitch Rupert, he's a guy that follows the Phillies farm system pretty close. If you're not familiar with him, you should definitely go follow him because he's a good follow. But uh, he said he's kind of like McGarry, like kind of has really bad control, con- control issues. And, I mean, if they can get that reeled in, I mean, I think he'd be a – Big time pitcher for sure. Mm-hmm, definitely. Yeah, we'll see how he, he moves up the system. I saw someone commented Kirkering 2.0. I, he's a starting pitcher, so I don't think that's going to be the case. Kirkering was a really rare case where he didn't have like he didn't have the uh, the stamina to be a starter. His stuff wore off after an inning, and because of that, he fell to the fifth round. And he had that like superstar relief pitcher ret- potential that we obviously saw uh, some flashes of last year. But he, my point being, like, he was a really rare case to where since he was just, like, they got him in the building as a relief pitcher and they kind of got a bargain on him, he had that path 
to get up to the big leagues. I mean, or just get to the high minors by the end of the year too. Whereas some of the, I mean, some of the other guys, I think a lot of people, like people, again, I, I've said this before, people want to label the, this guy as the next Hoffman. They want to label someone as the next uh, Kirk Ring. Those are two very special cases. You know, you're not going to be able to replicate them. You can do similar things with other guys, but it's crazy. We had both those guys in the same year pitching on the big league club. It's kind of crazy to think about. Um, but also there's not really like a need for another one of those guys right now too, because the bullpen's no. so good. Yeah. So yep. uh, that makes a great point here. I feel like the righties keep getting jammed on inside fastballs. Frustrating to see the late swing after late swing. Yeah. And it's really unfortunate when they get those pitches outside too. And you're like, well, you're already late. Why can't you just take that to right field? You know, but uh, as far as I'm getting jammed, yeah, it feels like JT is the only guy who's doing stuff with anything inside. And that's because he fixed that hole in the swing this off season. And he's been great at that so far, but it does feel like that's been the case a good bit of the time. Yeah. I mean, that ball that Trey hit today was actually pretty good and it was pretty inside. So that was, yeah. that was nice to see. Yeah. Yeah. The only guy who fought one off for a hit, I think was Merrifield. So, yep. and that's what Merrifield does. I mean, he just gets weak contact hits, but he knows how to bloop them. He knows how to fight them off and get the barrel there, even if it's inside. Um, it's kind of Brandon Phillips asks, uh, asking yeah. some sense too. Uh, that guy, I knew someone who knew a teammate of his, Drew Heisey, and he had a drill Brandon Phillips did where he would put the T like the, he would put the baseball in the T and he would be like, his belly button would be up against the T. And he'd still get his hands inside and get the barrel of the baseball. I don't know how. Like, it is incredible. That guy was something else. So Merrifield, I'm sure, does certain drills like that, too, where he just knows how to get the, get the best part of the bat to the baseball every single time. So just wanted to note that on Merrifield. I mean, he does a good job of that. Even when, yeah, like it's a weak contact hit, but he, he's doing things fundamentally to get the barrel there. So you can appreciate that. Yeah. Um, Robert says, you're right, Ben. When Doubleday invented the game, he didn't think about a pitch clock. Yeah, I do think there's something to be said, though. Like, the game does need to evolve over time, too. Again, I'm not an advocate for the pitch clock. I'm not really – like, I do appreciate, like I said, the art of not having it and having these guys go at their own pace. I do think there's a mental side of that. But I also do think – I don't think it's been a bad thing for the game. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with that for sure. I mean – like you said, the game has to evolve a little bit with time and to accommodate the new generations or whatever it may be. Because nowadays people just don't have the attention span to sit there and watch a five hour long game. Yeah. And, and no, no sport has is played the same way it was started uh, when it first started off, right? Like basketball is there's things that have been changed over time with basketball. There's things that have been changed with football. The core, the core value, like the core principles that are like the, the core rules are still the same, but um you know, there's things that do need to evolve. So I'm not yep. super upset about that being implemented the past uh, year and now this year. Um, toughest fans, welcome in. Good to see you here in the, the stream. So it's good to see JT getting on base in every game he's played. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, JT's looked absolutely phenomenal to start the year. And he had, I mean, he was, the guys on the Nationals were just running rampant on him today. But I think a lot of the time it was kind of tough because he was calling breaking balls and then they would run on the breaking ball pitch. And I mean, JT at that point, pretty much has no chance which yeah. i mean other than that i mean his offense like you said has been great and i mean i think everybody can appreciate that because that's when jt's at his best absolutely i don't have anything to add to that and we just to clarify jonathan we did win this series it was just we lost the series finale which i'm guessing is what you meant um it was unfortunate to drop the series finale obviously the offense was really disappointing today but again i think we kind of listed a lot of reasons why we're not concerned about it with you know, the way the lineup was set today, which I'm okay with the way the lineup was set, but you didn't have all your best guys there. And you're not going to sweep every single series that you get a series win. And it's, it's hard to get a sweep, especially when the other team, they're going to have a little bit of a jolt on that final day. So I'm not super sub upset about losing today's game. Yep. I'm right there on the same page with you. Yeah. And Scott says, I mean, yeah, the young shirts throwing a hundred that that's the concern. I mean, if Paul Skeens has to end up getting it at some point too, then you're like, shoot, like this is happening to every guy. And I don't know. Like it's, I'm not saying it's going to happen to Paul Skeens. I'm not, I'm not a doctor or, or, you know, I don't have a crystal ball, but who knows? I mean, it, it could happen. It happened to Painter and now it's happened to probably happen to Strider. We don't know for sure, but it certainly seems like that's what's going to happen. And Shane Bieber falls victim to it this year too. I saw some guy bet on both Bieber and I saw that Strider for the Cy Youngs. Poor guy, man. Out 15 bucks. That's, I mean, that's an unfortunate one, but um, yeah, it, it is. I mean, it is scary. You know, it, it definitely. Every fan base is now having to be cautious about it, or every team is having to be cautious about it. Every fan base is having to be afraid of it now. And 
it's it it is it really sucks man it's a sucky part of the game but it's unfortunately the way the game is trending right now with higher view lows so you know yep and this is know. strider's uh strider second time yeah which yeah. is so uh, very go. unfortunate yeah really unfortunate man really unfortunate. <laughs> actually i saw i saw something uh Somebody said if he came, if they took some muscles out of his butt and put him in, put him in his elbow, he'd come back throwing yeah. 300 mile an hour. I did see that. I thought, yeah, I thought that was funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strider's Strider's uh, he's a weird player, man. But yeah, um, obviously he's got a some very talented pitcher. Yeah. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely, definitely got some strong legs, um, and that's that's part of what makes him a great pitcher too. Which is why it's also disappointing that he does get Tommy John because. He's one of the guys like, yeah, as much as we make fun of like his, uh, you know, the muscle, like the muscles he has and wearing his sister's pants and all that, like he's generating a lot of, a lot of velocity from that lower half too. So definitely credit to him, man. I mean, um, he does it the right way and it's unfortunate that it's probably what is going to happen now. And now he's going to be shut down. So sucks, man. But yeah, I mean, also the Braves fans doing the chop for 50 plus years. Some of them are going to need Tommy John, like Ben says too. So, um, you know, hope they're all okay, um, from doing the chop for so long, but yeah, obviously we never wish injury on them, so hopefully they don't need Tommy John. But they're probably not going to need it after this year. They're not going to be doing it very much. So no, true, that. true. Um, yeah, as far as takeaways from the first week goes, any bold takes we have? I mean, um, takeaways for me, uh, I'll give one. You can give one, and I'll just, I'll just give. We'll just give two total. Um, I mean, I'll take the easy one. JT's been awesome to start this year. I think he's been better defensively as well. Has had a couple times where he's had trouble getting the ball out of his glove, but he's already on a better pace to throw out guys at second base than last year. And his bat, whatever he fixed in the biomechanics lab to get to those sinkers inside, been way better. Uh, he's been better with runners in scoring position so far, from what I understand. I'd have to check the stats on that. I'm kind of just remembering yesterday's home run, but it seems like he's been much better with runners on. Um, he's been critical, like crucial at that four, that four spot, and they needed someone to step up in that role that, like coming into this season. So... He's been great as the fourth hitter. I love him as the cleanup guy right now. Um, yeah, I mean, JT has been awesome to start this year. So I'll, I'll, I took the obvious one, but that's kind of what yeah. I got for first one. I mean, I think uh, I think my bold take from the beginning of the season or before the season of Bohm having 40 doubles is kind of looking pretty good. I think he's yeah. been pretty good so far. Definitely. Bohm has looked pretty solid. Um, other takes I have, uh, I think of a good second one. I mean, I think the rotation looks very good to start this year. Oh, um, yeah, that's definitely. one of my big takeaways. Like, that's not a bold. I mean, both of mine aren't bold takes; they're just kind of takeaways. But uh, they both look very good. I, the um, rotation looks very good, all four of them, yeah. uh, and plus Turnbull too, which he's not. I mean, I'm not expecting him to be the fifth guy all season long, but they have been great to start this year. Even today, like on a day where Chris Sanchez wasn't his best, and Ranger Suarez, you know, he did give up three earned runs in his first start, but limiting the damage and even in that yep. first try i thought ranger was still really good that day whereas i you know i thought chris sanchez wasn't his best today um in their worst games the worst game the only outlier is nola and they still probably have a sub three era even with that i think that coming in today it was like one six five yeah um, so they've been awesome to start this season very pleased with how the rotation is pitched for all the people who wanted jordan montgomery they have been just fine without him <laughs> so i'm not really super concerned about that just yet i'm sure we'll hit a point in this season where people are going to be complaining about it but you know, I never advocated for Taiwan still being here. It's just they can't really trade him right now. Um, I would rather him not be on the roster and Montgomery be on the roster, but not for the money Montgomery wanted. But he did get a one. I mean, one year for that. It's not terrible. I don't know. We, we don't have to get into the the details of that. It is what right. it is. At this point. But anyway, yep. the rotation has been great. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still feeling pretty good about the fills after the first week here, especially given the injury to Strider. I mean, the, the, the division is still very well in play, so. I mean, just got to go out there and keep winning series. Yep. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I have any bold takes moving forward from right now. I mean, I guess my bold, my one bold take I'll give, uh, Schwarber's definitely going to hit like above 220, 230 this year. I feel pretty confident saying that he's at least going to be over 200. <laughs> I don't see any way with the way he's approaching his, uh, at bats right now. I don't see any way that doesn't happen, but, um, I, I think he's probably going to hit, I would say he'll hit 40 home runs on the dot right now. So you can bookmark that right after the first week of the season, 40 home runs. And I'm going to say he hits, I'll say he hits 240 as of right now. That'll fluctuate, but that's my bold take off of the first week of the season. So I don't know if you had any you wanted to share, but that's really all I got. Um, I don't really think I have any bold takes. I mean, I think my bold take was definitely the bone 40 doubles. Cause I don't think anybody's calling that, but I mean, yeah, I'll just stick with that one for now, I guess. Okay. 
Yeah. And uh, Robert says, is there a projected time period for painter's return? He's not coming back this year. I mean, we know that for a fact. So um, I know some people are out there saying they, they want painter to come back and that they should, but like with a young guy like that, you can't rush that. The no. bottom line is they probably should have gotten the surgery earlier last year. And now you're in a spot where you can't change that. Like you can't just, you can't just speed up the recovery time of Tommy John and just get these guys throwing. That's my opinion. You know, I'm not a doctor, but I would think that would only be a detriment. I wouldn't think that would, I wouldn't think that would necessarily help him. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but yeah. Um, sorry, Robert. I know you weren't saying that, but yeah, he's, he's not coming back till next year. Yep. I mean, that's, that's been the report. I mean, he might pitch, I think in the fall league this year, there yes, might be some bro. potential for that, but I mean, as far as MLB pitching goes, it's not going to happen this year. Yeah. And minor leagues not going to happen either, but uh, it would be good to see him in the, would, I guess it would be the Arizona fall league or I'm yep. sure. Cause I think by like around playoffs is when he would be able to return based on the timeline. So obviously he's not going to pitch in the playoffs, but just around that, like October timeframe, that would make sense. So that would line up. Um, yep. Yeah. And like Ben said, Turnbull tomorrow was definitely going to be intriguing. You know, I'm curious to see what he does in his second time out on the mound. He was very good the first time out and not great conditions and not a great lineup. You still do have Arenado and Goldschmidt to get through though. So yeah, you got to watch out for those guys, but yep. that's all yep. I got, man. Yep. That's all I got as well. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in. We got 11 people in here. Got the discord pinned at the top of the chat. So make sure you guys join that if you're not in the discord, but Again, we'll be going live for most of the post games this year, so just keep an eye out for them. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. We really appreciate all the support so far, even at the start of the season. It's going to be a fun one. I'm kind of ready for the trade deadline already, but obviously we need more We need more numbers and more information before we get to that point. But I'm really that's what I'm looking forward to. That's like Christmas Day. So ready for that, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. Drew, anything you want to say before we sign nope. off? Everybody have a great night. Enjoy this uh, long stretch of baseball here without any days off. You know, it's going to be a good couple weeks here for sure. Absolutely. Well, God bless you guys. We will see you guys on the next one. Peace out.